Okay, time to dive into it. Um, first element on, on theory here, after we settled that theory is important, unraveling. So uh, the unraveling model is, I think, the perfect uh, start, starting point into um, a, a session on theory because it is very you know, very fundamental and also relatively easy to get, right? So I think if you are a little bit afraid of theory and uh, say, oh, this is so complicated and so much math and so on, uh, don't be, because I, I promise uh, you will understand the basic intuition of that model here. And then I think we will build on this and, and you will see, you know, we can actually discuss quite a bit um, simply based on, on very fundamental um, models here. Okay, so Unraveling um, basically addresses uh, the fundamental question of uh, voluntary disclosure. Um, and that is, uh, well, why do firms or other agents for that matter voluntarily disclose information? So why do they do this, right? So what is the incentive and how does that work? So, or does it work? Yeah, do they disclose uh, voluntarily? Um, well, uh, I always, in this in these elements, I always give the motivating question first and then a, 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 a very bare bones answer as a main takeaway right from the start. And then we dive into uh, the thing a little bit more. So why do they do this? Well, to avoid adverse selection. Uh, I hope that you know what adverse selection is. Well, adverse selection always um, exists in markets when there is information asymmetry. And uh, because of this information asymmetry, uh, market parties can exploit each other. So in this case, um, uh, you could see that um, firms that don't disclose information have better information, for example, about their firm value than other market participants, and they could try to exploit this uh, informational advantage. Now, based on this, you might say, hey, why do they disclose it then? Because then their informational advantage is gone. So the reason for this is the market failure that is the outcome of a adverse selection problem. So if you are a capital provider and then there is a firm that has private information, the firm does not disclose this private information, would you be willing to give your money to this firm? Not necessarily or only under, under bad conditions. So now the firm has an incentive to actually provide information to you so that you can trust the firm so that you have the same information level and then you can actually give them your money, right? So this is the basic idea. It's very straightforward and I think it has a, it has a, a, a large appeal, okay? So now, we will look into the bare bones unraveling model, uh, and then uh, you will see how, uh, why this model is so important and how it can be used also to then, of course, have more refined analysis. So here is the model, and uh, you know, just don't get don't get nervous, right? So it, this is I, everything is very bare bones here, but I think it's it's really good to show the underlying basic mechanism. So we have a firm here. Uh, actually, we have a bunch of firms, and uh, these bunch of firms have a uh, each firm has a firm value X. Yeah, so there are I firms, and each firm has a firm value X, and the firm value X can be expressed as um, some information signal Y and an error term E epsilon. Okay, so the the error term epsilon here is unknown, but you know um, has a has an expected value of zero. Yeah, nice like error term should have. And then there's why, so why is this signal and why um, why is important here? So uh, this is the signal that firms can communicate and why is it being distributed in a bounded distribution? That's also important, you will see that. In a bounded distribution with a lower, lowest y and the highest y and, and this is common knowledge and also the density function of this distribution is common knowledge, okay? So there it is a, it is a, known distribution everybody knows this distribution so also the uh, the market participants not just the firms but of course the market participants do not know each y sub i of a given firm right so that means they they know the overall distribution but they don't know the, the y's for the firms so now the next thing which is extremely important and we will talk about this in a second as well um uh, so disclosing y is costless for the firm so they can choose to disclose at, at zero cost and and then if they disclose the disclosures are always truthful so they cannot lie okay so this is all as i said this is a starting point right so no disclosure cost always truthful disclosure and then the next thing is and this is also important like in good theory everything is important right so investors build rational expectations based on the information that they receive that means that they will price the firm at the market 
based on either y, if they can observe y, then the price simply becomes y, right? Because the error term has a zero uh, distribution, right? Or based on um, the, the expectation about x conditional on not seeing y. And you will see how this works in a second, okay? So now you can stop me for a second if you want and just think about what would be a potential equilibrium here. So I think in this case, if you have a little bit of, of a micro feel, you don't really need to do the math. You can simply look at this and actually see what the equilibrium should be. Yeah, play it in your head. Yeah, think about what would a firm do. Yeah, and so the firm observes why the firm needs to decide whether it wants to disclose why or not. So how would it do that? How would the market participants then react? Okay, think about it. Oh, stop me. And then once you think, ah, I got it, or maybe you know already, yeah, then let's let's look at the actual equilibrium. Yeah, you're back? Okay, perfect. Here's the equilibrium, and this is fundamental. Rosren and Milgram, both in 81, came up with this unraveling um, 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 equilibrium. And this is uh, the strategies that the firms uh, follow, is that all firms disclose. Technically, you can argue about the firm that is exactly at the lower bound of the distribution, so at, at y lower bar. So this firm this is indifferent whether it discloses or not. Why? Because the market will price firms with y lower bar if they don't disclose. Yeah? And because they, they have these skeptical expectations, so they form rational but skeptical expectations about the, the, the value of the firms that do not disclose. Um, yeah, and then this means that the, only the poorest firm in terms of why is, is indifferent between disclosing or not. Okay, so this is the only perfect uh, Bayesian equilibrium of this disclosure game. So that's the only um, uh, equilibrium which is a, actually stable and maintainable. Okay, so this is good from the perspective of transparency because, you know, it means that firms have a strong incentive to voluntarily disclose in order to av avoid the adverse selection problem which comes from the pricing of the non-disclosing firms. So I prepped a little bit of a of a um, 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 visualization of this result, and you will see this set up uh, a few times in this video. So <clears throat> please uh, bear with me if it looks a little bit technical in the beginning. So what we see here is we see uh, firms. Yeah, we see ten firms, and these firms actually are uniformly distributed in terms of their information. So the information here would be y, right, and the price here would be x. I know x and y normally is the other way around, but here information is the input and price is the output, so this is why. Um, so information, yeah, so the firms are distributed from 1 to 10. 10 is the, uh, is, is the firm with the best information, yeah, and, and 1 is the firm with the lowest information, and you get the idea. And currently we are in the setup where, um, you know, nobody is disclosing anything. Yeah, we're stepping through the equilibrium now, basically. Nobody uh, has, any, has disclosed anything, and this is why all the dots are red. Okay, and, and that means that the market prices the firms based on the expectation over the distribution of y, and they know, okay, the distribution of y is from 1 to 10 uniform, and this, you know, if you do the math, they, they will get an average uh, price of 5.5, and this is exactly how these firms are being priced. So now you see the 45 degree diagonal, and you see that all these firms that are right of this diagonal, they are actually priced under value. So they are under value. These poor or five dots here. So these five red dots. The other five, they are actually fairly happy, right? So they are overpriced, um, assuming that the firm has any incentive to be overpriced. So now what happens is, of course, that these five firms here that are underpriced, they have a strong incentive to actually disclose their information, and they will do, right? So they will announce, hi there, here's our information. I'm six, I'm seven, I'm eight, I'm nine, I'm 10. And the market, because the information is actually trustworthy, right? So, and the market would say, okay, ah, oh, good, good. Thanks for letting me know. Um, now I will adjust your price, okay? So here, bam, price is adjusted, okay? So now you see that these firms are actually priced at value, right? So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we have these other five firms here. And these other five firms, you know, you can stop me again and think what will happen to these other five firms. So, well, what will happen? Um, you see that these five firms now, they don't disclose, so there's no new information, but the market now sees that, well, these other firms, you know, they revealed their price. So, meaning that 
Um, this also tells us something about, let's say, in the stepwise ordering, something about the firms that did not disclose. Now, the market can build assumptions based on the other firms being, you know, disclosing. Yeah. So, and and then, of course, the market will adjust the price of the firms that did not disclose downwards because now they know, okay, only the firms with prices lower than six have not disclosed. So. You know, we see that they must be distributed between one and five, and this gives a new average. Whoop! Yeah, down there you go. So now you're getting the idea, I think. Now the, the next thing is, well, um, these firms again have to decide whether they want to uh, disclose or not. And and here, you know, I'm I'm making the assumption that each firm that is uh, at least indifferent starts to disclose. This is only to have a sh nice equilibrium with everybody disclosing at the end, nobody being indifferent. And this means that these new free firms now disclose. Yeah, you get the idea, right? So now again, the other firms that don't disclose, hmm, the market will adjust the price again, moving them downwards. Yeah, and this again will trigger the firm with a value uh, with an information of two to disclose. Yeah, because it can do better, right? So it discloses. So and now we reach this point where only one firm has not disclosed, and so the market prices this disclose uh, this firm at y lower bar okay so now technically uh, you could argue that this very last firm here is indifferent so whether it discloses or not doesn't matter for the firm but since disclosure is costless and since we want to have a clean end here yeah nah, let's disclose you know this firm discloses as well as i said i here for this setup i assume that firms if they are indifferent about disclosing or not but they disclose so um i hope that this um, helps you to understand this mechanism and and I think understanding this mechanism is something that is feasible for everybody and this should also motivate you to to see that theory doesn't have to be hard yeah so here I think this is not really that challenging to understand so take your time go through it again and then I think you will get the idea relatively quickly right um, and as you will see we will when we move through these videos of this session you know things will become a little bit more complicated but in the end you don't have to become a math um, mastermind in order to understand theory. You can always try to focus on the intuition. And what I will do here throughout these videos, I will clearly focus on the intuition. So I will try to keep the math, the front end math, let me put it that way, to the to the bare bone minimum, right? So that we can uh, focus on, you know, here the driver. So now this is unraveling. So unraveling basically results from this incentive. Um, let me play the video, ha, just for pins and giggles. So um, unraveling is based, is based on the incentive simply that um, firms, whenever they see that the market prices them under value, have an incentive to disclose this information. Okay, And this is something that obviously you might argue whether it actually is uh, empirically descriptive or not, but you see that it is actually um, um, a powerful force, right? So this incentive. I think this is an incentive is there. So let me move on here. You see, when you think about empirical support, you see that, hey, um, there, there are studies that show that firms have this incentive to voluntarily disclose. For example, there's a very nice study in uh, JOF, Journal of Finance, in 2014 by Balakrishnan et al. that actually look at firms that have lost their analyst coverage uh, for exogenous reasons and, and, and whether these firms actually start voluntary disclosure and whether this, again, have a, has an effect on the liquidity of these firms. And they, they provide relatively convincing evidence that this is actually going on, which is nice. I like that, right? But there's also evidence um, that, that firms still withhold bad information, right? So, um, so meaning that, for example, Bauer L, I think it looks at, at, at short um, interest that um, uh, managers have, and they show that there is, you know, there seems to be an indica indication that um, um, managers withhold bad information based on their analysis. There are other studies that do this, right? So now, um, obviously, when you follow this um, this presentation of the unraveling principle, you will already see that well, there are good reasons why firms would not disclose. You know, for example, maybe because information is not is not costless, right? So producing information is costly. So maybe this is one reason why firms don't disclose, although they can, or maybe because. Um, well, it cannot be verified, right? So it, it's hard to verify information, okay? Or maybe because um, not each firm actually has this information. So we're a little bit insecure about the actual distribution of firms. All very good reasons why unraveling might not um, completely work. And, and, and while the, the truthful thing will come up in the next video, that we will be looking at cost now and, and the level of security 
um, that the firm actually has information. And we will do this relatively quickly, but I think it should give you the idea how, how a good bear model can be used to modify it and to extend it to, to um, study other settings that are also very interesting. Okay, let's move to the first thing. So this is a very um, standard thing. So we, we're just assuming disclosure costs now. Right? So we had a zero cost setting in the beginning, and now I simply imposed a disclosure cost of three, meaning that um, when we disclose information, this will cost, um, in this case, not the firm, but you know, some, some, some manager, managerial decision maker, three, three um, units. Right? So this is quite costly. <laughs> so in, in, in whatever technical terms, if you look at the firm value in, in total, right? So it's a, it's a very high level of cost. You can think empirically about, let's say for publicly listed firms, where we assume that the direct cost of disclosure to be that high. Okay, so good. Now let's see what happens. We will step through it again. So you, you got the idea from the last time. Now the relevant uh, decision line is no longer the 45 degrees diagonal, but the reddish a, a parallel line to it and um, because it reflects the cost. So currently firms are being priced at 5.5, only the ones read of this line, so the firm with, with information 9 and the firm with information 10 have a clear incentive to disclose because 5 plus 5 plus 3, 8.5 and 9 and 10 is higher, so they will disclose. Yep, they do. And here now the, the market reacts to this and prices them at value. So here, by the way, if uh, you see the differentiation, you could you could build this differently by assuming that the informa the, the disclosure cost actually reduces firm value, right? So this then would uh, shift the you know the prices differently. So here we assume that uh, whoever carries the cost here uh, is the decision maker, but this does not aff affect firm value directly. Okay. So now uh, unraveling works exactly like in the in the base case. Yeah. So price has been adjusted. Uh, but now it's not adjusted that much because, you know, the market knows that only two firms have, to, have started to disclose. So it still assumes that every firm from one to eight is still not disclosing. Yeah, so this is why, you know, the price adjustment is somewhat muted. But still, there is another firm that says now, okay, if this is the case, I will disclose as well. Yeah, and so you see there is another move here and then another move and another move and that's it. Okay, so here now you see that this is the equilibrium. Yeah, so you don't have a complete unraveling in this equilibrium because disclosure costs are positive. You have a bunch of firms, yeah, every firm from uh, information one to six that still um, decides not to disclose in equilibrium. Why? Because disclosing is not worth the cost. So it's a typical benefit cost um, uh, decision here, and the market is aware of this and and because of that of prices these firms at a price higher than y lower bar right so it prices the firm on the expectation of y given that these firms don't disclose and this is critically dependent on the disclosure cost yeah so you see here there's a bunch of firms that are pooled and some of these firms here left of the diagonal are actually overpriced and other firms are underpriced yeah so this is the typical a typical takeaway from this from this disclosure cost argument, right? You see that. So no full unraveling anymore, but instead what you see is you see firms that are pooled in a in a in a intransparent equilibrium here. Okay, good. Yeah, so that happens. So now we have a uh, setup that um, uh, is is based on the die paper in JAR eighty five, which has been extended and, and uh, by Wong, Yong and Quan in uh, 1988. So it's this classic paper. And this paper, these papers make a very, um, um, I think a very realistic assumption and an interesting assumption. They ask the question, well, what happens if some of these firms simply don't have the information? Yeah? So of course this can be the case, right? It could be that only some firms learn why and some firms don't learn why and, and the market cannot observe whether the firms have or have not why. Okay, So uh, this is a very uh, general assumption that also can be interpreted in different ways. Yeah, So maybe some firms are simply unable to communicate tr truthfully and this is why they have they, they cannot communicate at all. Yeah, So, um, so now 
the market has to uh, factor this in into their decision making and let's see how that works. So we have a new color here, greenish color for those uh, firms that are uninformed. So here I simply assume that roughly 30% of the firms are uninformed and just randomly pick three firms. Yeah. So um, now what you see here is again, we have now a setting with zero cost. Yeah, so you could combine this, of course, Yeah, be my guest. Um, but now we have a, a setting here again with zero cost. And, and now the first step is relatively simple. All the firms that actually um, uh, have information and are undervalued decide to disclose, right? And the market says thank you and prices them accordingly. So now what, what happens with the remaining firms is interesting because the, the remaining firms are now being um, estimated in a somewhat more complex way so because the market cannot be sure about uh, the firms that are actually um, not disclosing whether they disclose because they don't know uh, but sorry whether they don't disclose because they don't know or whether they disclose because um, uh, they are uh, overvalued currently right so whether they don't disclose because they're overvalued Okay, now here, so if you, if you take this setting now to the extreme, you might argue that given that you have very detailed uh, information about the discrete distribution here, you could actually infer that the Niner is not in, um, uh, um, informed, but this is of course not the point of this visualization here. So here we just assume that all these firms here, the market is not sure whether they have information or not. Okay, so they simply observe these firms as non-disclosing firms so they don't the market doesn't know whether they're green or red right so just a bunch of non-disclosing firms okay now um uh, next step now is that the market adjusts the price and and this is now a weighted average of the firms that that uh, the market assumes to have the information and the firms that where the market doesn't uh, assume to have the information right and so this means that the, also the, the the decline of the price is somewhat muted Okay, so now uh, based on this, again, unraveling takes place. So we have one firm that says, well, now I'm, I'm a rather disclosed, right? So here we go. Um, and this is of course adjusted. And this also again reacts to another price um, reaction, right? And, and yeah, so here we have the, the basic setting, right? And this is it. So the firm here, the reddish firm, um, is, is just the left of the diagonal. So this is why it doesn't show, uh, change their behavior. So now we have five firms that, um, uh, that disclose, uh, sorry, we have five firms that don't disclose here. And the interesting bit is now when you compare these five firms, you can say something about uh, the, the uninformed versus the, the not disclosing firms, so the firms with information. So the first thing is easy. Yeah. So the red points, you can be certain that the, the firms that have information that do not disclose, that um, that these firms are overvalued, yeah. So um, why it's obvious because if they if since they have the information, if they wouldn't be overvalued, then they will be um, they they would be disclosing. Okay. So the firms that do not disclose in in this type of equilibrium are are overvalued firms. Okay. So now the other ones, the green ones. This is not as trivial, but um, also can, you can conclude this more or less from from um, uh, the opposite of the, what I just said. Um, so the green firms here, the green firms, they are undervalued on average. Yeah, you see this here in this graph quite brutally because you have the, the firm here with, the, uh, with, with a value of nine that is priced at three. Yeah? And you have the other firm here that is also relatively uh, largely undervalued, but you also have a green firm here that is overvalued. The reason why on average, the green firms are undervalued is that this price here again is also a weighted average based on the probability of um, the firms being informed and not. And since the red firms, we know that they are overvalued, the green firms by definition have to be un undervalued. Yeah? Otherwise, this wouldn't be a weighted average. Okay, so um, this is an important takeaway from the die model, which I think is interesting because now you see that. Um, even with this relatively, let's say, very simplistic modeling approach, you can make an argument that I would um, assume for most of us wouldn't be obvious without thinking about this theoretically. So the argument would be that in a setting where some firms have information and other firms don't have information, we can assume that there is an 
that there, for those firms that don't disclose their information, that the firms that actually have the information, that they are systematically overvalued, and the firms that don't have the information, that they are systematically undervalued. So, and this is important because it means that um, it is it is it might be useful uh, to develop methods for firms to actually retrieve this information and to be able to communicate this information trustworthy to the market because the ones that are having not the, which don't have this opportunity they normally are at, at a pricing at disadvantage against the other firms so they will be undervalued yeah and and they will be pooled together with firms that have the information but strategically decided to withhold this information because they are overvalued, okay? And this is unfortunate, right? And this is not plain vanilla obvious from just thinking about it. So I think this is where you see that actually, you know, using a theoretical setup to structure your thought can make a, can uh, lead to interesting conclusions, okay? So this is unraveling. So the mothership of voluntary disclosure, right? So from here out, we now start with two uh, with the two next videos and wander a little bit more into the theory world uh, where uh, you know things become a little bit more complicated but maybe even um, also even more interesting yeah okay bear with me next video is coming up bye